Hello everyone, welcome back. In my introduction section, I had mentioned that as DBAs or as admins, you would be looking to patch the complete stack of Exadata. Now you must be wondering what exactly is this Exadata stack? If I talk in terms of a layman, then a stack is nothing but a collection of different components. Now let's take a look at the Exadata stack. The Exadata stack comprises of different components, which are the storage grid, also called the Exadata storage servers or the storage cells. These are depicted in red in the figure, as red in the figure, wherein if I take an example of a full rack of Exadata and there are 14 storage servers, then there are seven storage servers at the top and seven storage servers at the bottom. Then the second important is database grid, which comprises of the database servers, which has the firmware operating system, the GI, which is a grid infrastructure, and the RDBMS. Again, taking an example of a full rack of Exadata with eight database servers, we have four database servers at the top and four at the bottom and shown with the blue color. And then third is the network, which is the IB network or the InfiniBand network, which is comprised, comprised of three switches. One is the spine switch and other two are the leaf switches. Then we have other components like Ethernet switch, the power distribution units, also called the PDUs, and the KVMs, which are the keyboard, video, mouse. Let's take a look into each of these components. So a storage grid is Exadata storage server software. It helps to store and access the Oracle database data. It is a database aware storage, unlike traditional storage. That's why in the Oracle world, we call it the intelligent storage. We can easily offload the SQL processing to the cell servers or the storage servers. The storage servers process the data at storage level and pass only what is needed to the database server. The Exadata storage provides storage to the Oracle databases using automatic storage management or ASM. And we do have options of using normal redundancy or high redundancy. If I take an example, and if I have to let's say scan a 10 terabyte of table, in a normal scenario, the 10 terabyte table is scanned and that 10 terabyte is sent via the network over to the database server where the processing happens. But with Exadata, the 10 terabyte would be scanned and just one gigabyte of data would be sent back to the database servers. So only the information that is actually required is sent back to the database server instead of sending the entire table across. It also uh, gives you different features of uh, offloading, also called smart scans, and we also have something called storage indexes. Each cell contains 12 physical disks, and each physical disk is further divided into cell disks, grid disks, and ASM disks. Now we move on to the database grid. A database grid is nothing but the database servers. We have two variants of database servers, like if I take an example of X7 rack, it will we will have an X72 or X78, which is a two socket server and eight socket server. For eight socket server, we normally say that eight database servers are replaced by two big database servers. And this is the area where your Oracle home and Oracle binaries would reside. If I'm talking about the clusterware, then the grid infrastructure home would be installed over here. And also talking about the firmware, firmware is a, soft, a permanent software programmed into the read-only memory or ROM of the system. And manufacturers makes improvements to the programs that run the device, which is the firmware. And these improvements are released as firmware updates. And these database servers help you to communicate with the storage servers via the ASM. The third important bit is the InfiniBand network or the IB switches. In Exadata, we normally have three IB switches, which is one spine switch and two leaf switches. A spine switch helps you to connect an Exadata with other external servers like a storage expansion rack or a ZFS system.
And then there are leaf switches. The leaf switches help you to connect the storage servers with the database servers. And InfiniBand, it's a compute networking standard used in high performance computing that provides high throughput and low latency. As of year 2014, it was normally used in supercomputers, but Oracle decided to build their own set of IB switches called the IB switches or the InfiniBand switches. As I said, we have the spine switches and the leaf switches. It helps you to provide high performance that is around 40 gigabits per second or 5 gigabytes per second. Then we have the other components also called which are the Ethernet switch, which helps in the management of the uh, of the Exadata st uh, stack. Then we have the power distribution or the PDUs and we have the KVM or the keyboard video mouse switch. So to sum it so to sum it all, I would say that when I say we have to patch the stack of Exadata, then these are the components that we would be looking to patch as per of as per this exercise. So we will be patching the storage grid, we will be patching the database grid, the InfiniBand network and the other components. Thank you.